If your house is already haunted, then this video isn't for you. But if you'd like to put the haunt in your house at least one day of the year, then keep on watching. You've seen hundreds of makeover shows, but none quite like this, because we're gonna turn this house into this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Lay. I've done visual effects for television, shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Showtime's Outer Limits, and many, many others. Today, some friends and I are gonna teach you how to do some great effects in your very own yard. We're gonna talk now a little bit about strobe lights. What's wrong with this picture? Well, it doesn't so much look like a haunted house as it does a disco dance. And why would that be? Well, how many of you have ever seen lightning strike on and off, on and off, on and off, flashing on and off? Nobody. That's because lightning just strikes, flutters, flickers, and then stops, and then starts back up again. Well, we're gonna show you how to do that at home yourself. Now that's a whole lot more like it. Teresa, hit the lights. I'm gonna show these folks how to do that. Basically, you need four separate ingredients. You need a common household extension cord, you need a very common night light kit, night light lamp you can find at pretty much any home center or store, supermarket. And of course you need a strobe light. At least one strobe light, but preferably a couple strobe lights, and I'll show you why later. And then you need the secret ingredient, which is a flasher circuit. Now you can get this little baby at pretty much any lighting store. A lamp place, light bulb place, lighting depot, anything like that. Just call around in your neighborhood and I guarantee you'll be able to find a flasher circuit. Make sure that they have one that is a plug-in and not a screw-in into a light bulb flasher circuit. It looks pretty much just like a plug that goes into another plug. But what it does is it makes lights flash. It's actually important to know that this little device needs to heat up before it will work. And I'm gonna show you why right now. Here we have your common run-of-the-mill strobe light, which you can find in pretty much any party store or Halloween store. And of course, when you plug it in, it does as expected, it's little disco light show. Well, oddly enough, if we plug it into the flasher circuit, believe it or not, it's gonna do the exact same thing. It's either gonna flash or it's gonna just be off, completely off. The problem is, is the fact that a strobe light doesn't draw enough current to actually heat this thing up to make it flip on and off. Remember I said before that a little magnetic thing in here heats up and turns this flasher on and off. So we have to add one more thing here. We have to add this night light that we talked about before so that we can actually heat this thing up. So we're gonna take the night light and we're gonna put it in the end of the extension cord. Now on the other end of the extension cord where the plug is, we're gonna put our flasher circuit. This little night light here will draw just enough current to actually heat up this little flicker circuit to make it flash on and off. So then when I plug this in, you'll see that this thing, as you can see, is actually kind of dim. It's already pulling enough current to heat this up. This is gonna draw just enough current to heat this up to make this circuit flash on and off. And then I'm gonna add my strobe light into the end of this extension cord as well. So it will flash on and off with the little night light. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to hide the night light somewhere where you don't see it and put the strobe lights out where you can. Okay, so here we have the night light on the end of the extension cord and we have two strobe lights plugged into this extension cord. This extension cord is plugged into our flasher circuit, which is plugged in either into the wall or into another extension cord. Here we're using two strobe lights. And as I had mentioned before, it's better to use two because then you have a sort of random flash between each of them. It, it simulates lightning a little bit more closely. The best thing is to not have the strobe light turned up all the way high. It's better to have it at a very, very slow rate and each one slightly different, so that when it flashes, they both play off each other, and it flashes randomly. And that's pretty much how you make homemade lightning. I never thought of that. Strobe lights do look like disco lights unless they flash at random. That was a real flash of inspiration. Hi, I'm gonna show you how to make this ghost that sits on a post. It'll be the host with the most. Very easy to make. First, we take this little plastic globe that you can buy at any home center or lighting store. And the beautiful thing about last Christmas is when you got your lights all tangled up, you can keep them tangled up. This will be used to illuminate the globe at night. It'll look beautiful. And we just shove it in the inside. You can see right now in the daylight it works, but at night it'll be beautiful. Also, you wanna make sure that you get a mask that allows the light to come through it and you just put that around. 
Then I'm going to take a staple gun just to make sure it uh, stays put. Just put a few staples in there. And then basically take a sheet, an old sheet, don't use mom's best. And come around, drape it around here. Do the same thing with the staple gun. We can put a wig on it if we want or we can just leave it as is. Basically when we put this in the ground we can use a PVC pipe or a 1x2, we can find it in any hardware store. We can even use a yardstick or a piece of branch. And that's how we're gonna scare the neighbors. Well now that Tim's done all of the heavy construction work for us, we're gonna do a little something extra. Now you can leave it just as is, but if you want to go the extra yard, there's a couple amazing things you can do to really spook the kitties. First, take a drop cloth, 0.8 mil or 1 mil thick. They're really inexpensive and you can get them at most home centers anywhere that they sell paint. This stuff is really inexpensive, probably less than a dollar for 9 feet by 12 feet. You're going to probably want to cut a small section of it. So go ahead and cut it in half, save the rest for later, unroll it out. And then we're going to place it over the top of our ghost. This is going to add that ethereal wispy vapor around our ghost. Once you pretty much have it over to center, you're going to want to staple it on. That's why that plastic globe inside comes in so handy. Once you get the veil over your ghost, you're going to add the final most important ingredient, and that's an electric leaf blower. We're going to put this underneath the ghost to blow that plastic out at just the right time to give a little chill to the kitties coming for trick or treat. Underneath the ghost we're going to place our leaf blower right in front of the sheet but behind the plastic. You may need a couple of blocks or bricks to prop this up. Then we're going to cover it up with our plastic. When you connect up your leaf blower make sure you get an extension cord that has a switch on it so that you can throw it at just the right time or at many Halloween stores and almost any home center, you can now buy a remote control power switch. They're probably around $10. It has a little remote control, just like for your car or garage door opener, and an outlet. Plug the leaf blower into the remote control box, and then plug it into the extension cord. Now we have our leaf blower hidden under our ghost. Make sure that the air intake is completely free and that the plastic is kind of short on the side so that it doesn't get sucked up into there either. Put the plastic on the ground in front. You may find it necessary to pin one or two of the corners down with a brick and then from the doorway, let the kitties have it. Once again, you're going to want to illuminate your work of art by adding some floodlights and cover those light bulbs with tombstones. was ghoul! Pick a ball, any ball. This is a floodlight. You can tell by all the little dimples that cause the light to bounce everywhere and flood the scene. This is a color floodlight. This is a spotlight. It's clear glass and you can see right through to the filament. Use a spotlight if you want to concentrate the light on one subject. This is a specialty spotlight called a pin spot. You can tell because a little cap covers the filament. You can get these at most novelty stores. They're used to light a mirrored ball. They're great for throwing a narrow beam of light a long distance. At most home centers, you can get inexpensive outdoor floodlight holders that stake right into the ground. Place a floodlight in a strategic location aimed at your subject to bathe the area in light. Spotlights and color lights are great ways to add ambiance. Fill out the dark spots and make sure the tricksters can see all of your Halloween treats. Okay, now we're going to show you how to make something really spiffy. I'm going to show you how to make fake blood. Now, I know you can get this in Halloween stores and just about anywhere this time of year, but I'm going to show you how to make stuff with some very simple ingredients on your own. And I'm going to show you how to make two kinds. 
We're gonna make some that you can actually have dribbling out of your mouth and it's okay, you know, to eat. And I'm also gonna show you some stuff that you don't wanna eat, because it tastes really bad, but is gonna be easier to wash off clothing and stuff. So let me show you what kind of ingredients we got. We got some light corn syrup, some red gel toothpaste, packets of gelatin. I prefer the non-sugared kind, so it's just the powdered, basically, coloring. And you gotta get something like black raspberry or black cherry, any dark red kind of flavor. So you get a nice dark red color. And then we've got your basic food coloring. Probably just gonna need the red and the blue. Dish soap, clear dish soap. That'll be the stuff that you don't eat. And something to mix it in, something to stir it with. And I've got some empty bottles with little squeezy tops so we can squirt it all over things. And some baggies. You wanna put it in something to ooze out or if you wanna be able to get it in the bottles, that's gonna help us if you don't happen to have a funnel. And of course, some little scissors so that you can cut the baggies. All right, first we're gonna start with some corn syrup and the amount that you use is not a real big deal you know make a little bit experiment a little bit see what you like and we're going to put some of our dark red colored gelatin in there you notice the gelatin doesn't get some color until you get some liquid in there there we go now that's a pretty light color. Not really blood colored yet. You can always add a little food coloring. Get a little darker. There we go. Now see how it's sort of getting really, really bright red? A lot of blood isn't too bright, so you want to tone it down a little bit with a little blue. That helps, not too much. Now you can always add a little bit of water to this to make it pour easier. <laughs> but you can take this stuff and you can have it like dribbling out the side of your mouth. So you look like you're bleeding all over the place. Really good stuff. And it's okay to eat. So now if this is a little too runny, you can make it runnier by adding a little bit of water. Or if it's a little too runny for whatever you want to do, make it just sit nicer, dribble better. You can add some red gel toothpaste just to thicken it up a bit. And it's already a nice red color. So you want to be sure and you get red gel toothpaste. It's the only one that'll work for this. And you go ahead and you goop it in there. And yes, as you can tell, this is going to be tasting really, really sweet. But it helps to thicken it up a bit. There you go. All right. So this stuff, it's great to keep it in one of these squeezy bottles. And the best way to get it into a squeezy bottle, you can use a funnel, or you can use one of these handy little sandwich bags. So you basically, you just take it and you pour some of this stuff right in there. And then go ahead and seal that up so you don't make a mess. Empty out one of the corners. And you can squeeze it right down in your squeezy bottle. See, it already looks nice and disgusting, doesn't it? All right, the other thing is you can use these little sandwich bags to, you know, store the blood under the clothing. You can have it squeeze out at appropriate moments. It's kind of fun that way. And then with this handy dandy little squirty top, you'll be able to apply it to like dead bodies and shirt fronts and squeeze it all over the place. At the door, and you can like squeeze some fresh stuff all over your face and have it dribbling down. You know, it's like really easy. Just leave it by the door. And the other thing about the toothpaste is it helps it wash out when you like get it dripped all over the front of your clothing or if it drips on anybody else, it helps wash out. Anything, anytime you put any kind of uh, soapy kind of substance in there. Now, let me show you how to make the one that really washes out well that you don't want to eat. Now, it's a good idea to label everything you make. This is... Edible blood. And you can use the same bowl, so you don't have to get more than one bowl dirty. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna add some basic dish soap into your mixture, and that'll help it come out if you're putting it on stuff that, you know, you wanna be able to wash it out of. 
Now you don't want to shake it up too much or it might get really bubbly because of the soap. But it makes it nice and runny like blood. And you can always add a little bit more of your toothpaste just to thicken it up. Okay. So there we go. We've got some nice mixture of stuff that we can get out of clothes just a little bit better. And we're going to do the same routine. Pour it in the baggie. Close it up. If you got a lot of people around that you don't think they're going to be able to like keep their hands and mouth off of it, don't use the soap. <laughs> All right, now we have some perfect blood that we can use on all of our dead bodies lying around the yard. That ought to liven up the house a bit. Mmm, that's tasty stuff. One of the best looking things you can do for your house is to set it aglow. And to do that, you're just gonna need a couple of black lights. You can get these at most Halloween stores, party stores, and even your home centers. I also highly recommend that you get an inexpensive shop light fixture at a home center. These run between $7 and $10. They're really, really inexpensive. If you buy a fixture with a black light already in it, you'll probably get one light and one fixture for something like $40. So go with the shop light. You can place either one or two four-foot bulbs in the shop light fixture. You can get various length bungee cords at most building centers. You'll basically use these like giant rubber bands to hold the light fixtures to your house or porch. Make sure they're secure. Get a friend to help you if you hang them overhead. Use two cords per fixture. really great glowing eyes and decorations with fluorescent poster board that you can pick up at any grocery store, craft, or drug stores. Use a pencil to sketch out some eyes, mouths, and even eyebrows. Carefully cut the shapes out with a pair of scissors. You can stick your creations onto the walls or the outside of your house by using blue masking tape. The blue masking tape should not pull any of the paint off of your wall. You can also use store-bought stickers and plastic decals and cardboard props. Again, the blue masking tape is the best way to hang them. I wouldn't trust the glue on those stickers to come off easily or not peel up your paint. Tool is another great thing to use. It's that white netting stuff used in bridal veils. It can be purchased really inexpensively at almost any fabric store, or you can cut up a thrift store wedding dress. You can easily see through it, and it makes great eerie glowing curtains or veils. You can hang it with either tape or staples or tacks placed around the corners or in inconspicuous, harmless places. I also like to shred the netting a bit. It gives it a bit more of a haunted character. You can also take non-fluorescent store-bought props and give them a fluorescent makeover. All craft stores and most Halloween and even grocery stores sell fluorescent watercolor paints. They're safe, washable, and non-toxic. You can simply paint in some eyes or paint the entire prop. Most building and home centers will also carry fluorescent spray paint. Be careful with this because it is not washable and is toxic. Only spray paint objects outdoors in well-ventilated areas. Some Halloween stores may carry a safer, non-toxic glow spray paint that may be designed to wipe off of windows, just like spray snow for Christmas decorating. Check the labels to be sure. Once you get all of your props and wall hangings up, you can add lots of glowing spider webs to fill in the area. And there you have it, the whole house is a glow. And it would be really fun if the costume you wear at your door glows too. Either use glow in the dark or fluorescent colors, or use white cotton like we did with our lab jacket. <laughs> I'm just glowing after that last project. What an electrifying tip. One of the best props you can find is actually tree branches and they're all free lying around your very own neighborhood. So just take a little drive around 
anywhere you live, any city, and especially in October, there's gonna be a lot of dead tree branches lying around the neighborhoods. Be careful when getting these home, especially if they don't fit completely in the car. You may want to take along a rope with you to tie it down. And of course, a small pair of garden or pruning shears or a small handsaw could come in very handy if you need to remove excess branches that make it too big, heavy, or unwieldy to get into the car. You might want to take along all those little extra branches and twigs too. When you get your branches home, tie them or set them up in front of lampposts or porch corners or wherever you can. You might just lean them against the house or stick them in the ground. Old dead tree branches can really make the place look spooky in a big way. And it's the most bang per buck you can get. Make sure that they're secure, that no one will trip on them, and that there's no sharp branches sticking out at eye level where people might be walking. Next comes the fun. Just like a Christmas tree, you'll want to decorate these branches. Hang some props on them, like skeletons or owls or whatever you have. If the tree is near the black lights, use your glowing props. Add lots and lots of spider webs to the branches. You'll find it's really easy to work with on old tree branches because it really catches and snags on the limbs. branches on the streets and getting them home. At your local home or garden center, you can purchase a roll of weed blocker garden mesh. The object is to create what looks like a solid dark wall until the lights go on behind it. Unroll the mesh. Note how you can see through it only when light is on the other side of it. This trick works great in a doorway where kids expect there to be a solid door and where you can spring out. Use some push pins inside or around the top of the door frame to hold the mesh in place. You can easily place the pins or tacks around the corners so that the hole is out of sight when you are finished. Since we have the black lights on the house, I'm going to paint some fluorescent patterns on the front of the mesh. This way, we'll have an eerie glowing door under our black lights. The great thing here is that when the kitties ring the doorbell or simply get close to the screen, you can flip on the indoor lights and you'll suddenly appear through the screen. It's a crowd stopper. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Just wait till you see this. As we saw earlier with our blowing ghost, this 0.8 mil plastic or 1 mil plastic flows really, really well. And remember, it's really inexpensive. You can get it at most any home center. So with this, you can also make really cool curtains to hang in your house and place fans behind it. It will give a sort of an eerie blowing storm night kind of effect. Another thing you might want to do is to roll it into a tunnel, which we're going to do in a second, and place it at the end of a high velocity fan. Now you can get a high velocity fan at most any store. They come in different sizes. Some are very small. This one's pretty big, so it's gonna do one heck of a storm for us. And if you don't have one of these, check out your local thrift stores. At this time of the year, when it's already cooled off, there's a lot of fans on the shelves that you can get for a couple of bucks. Get a friend to help you fold the plastic drop cloth in half. You're gonna make a tunnel by taping the edge where both sides meet. Carefully tape the end of the plastic sheet together. When you're ready and you have a tunnel, Tape the end of the tunnel to the vortex fan. Make sure all of the plastic is on the side that the fan blows towards. You want to make sure that the plastic does not get sucked up into the fan. Place the fan off to the side somewhere, but make sure that air can get in behind it. You will need to cut the ends of the plastic, not only to make it a little bit more eerie, but also to reduce the weight on the end. Keep cutting the plastic off until the tunnel floats freely in the air and lifts off of the ground. You can leave this undulating tube as is and add lights, or you can place a prop in front of it, attaching the wispy ends of the plastic to the prop. Either way you choose, Adding some lights, and especially a strobe light, will add to the ghostly effect. You can also use plastic drop cloth as curtains. Here we see Teresa hiding the garage door by stapling plastic under the eaves. Here we see Teresa shredding the plastic. You may want to tear the ends of the plastic up a little bit and put slits in the middle 
so that when you use your fan, you'll have many eerie tendrils blowing in the wind. Let's take a look at what Teresa's doing. Guy. What do you think? Probably not too dark because it'd disappear. Wait, plaid? Actually, a sweatshirt would be really good. Well, lighter would show up better, especially if you want to put blood on it or something like that. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> something nice and colorful. Let's see how much is that? That's like five bucks. These would be really cool ghosts. Any kind of tennis shoe or any kind of thing. You can always tie them to the, oh, here's some, huh, um, great shoe selection. Here, maybe we'll get those at the next place. We need a good wig for a guy. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, green tan. Okay, cool. Bye. Bye-bye. First, you might want to just lay everything out on a nice wide open space. Then pick out the mask and clothes and lay them out in the shape of the body. For hands, you can either stuff some old gloves or you can purchase fake hands at Halloween stores. You'll need to poke some holes in them though, so you might want to use a power drill to do that. I'm putting a hole on each side and two holes on the top. If you can find fake hands, you might also want to get some fake feet. Of course, a couple old shoes from the thrift store will work just fine. Since I have them, I'm going to use both the shoes and the feet. All right, next up comes the body. You can stuff it with whatever items you can gather up. Here I'm using an old pillow for the belly, which I'm protecting with the garbage bag. I place the stuffed bag into the shirt and button it up. Next, I'm gonna make the head by stuffing a Halloween mask that I bought. I'm using a wild shirt because it makes for interesting looking eyes. Luckily, this head came with a hood. Now, if you can't find one like that, just get a hooded sweatshirt from the thrift store and a regular flat mask. Now you can get real creative tying things together. This garbage bag has drawstrings, so I'm gonna use them to tie on the head. Okay, next up are the legs and arms. Of course, you can stuff the pants and sleeves directly with newspaper or plastic or whatever, but I find that using a new or old pair of pantyhose makes the job really easy and looks a little bit more realistic. Here I use some plastic drop cloth and stuff the pantyhose. I'm gonna use these for the arms. Just stuff them right into the sleeves. Now putting the pantyhose around the neck like this keeps the arms in place. You can also take a little bit of the hose and make it look like a more realistic neck. To attach the hands, I poke a hole in the end of the pantyhose and use some wire to connect the hand. You can use wire purchased at building centers or string or even a wire hanger or electrical wire. To make the hands hit flesh up against the arm, I basically thread the wire through the holes in the hand and through the stockings. Then you can simply tie a knot or twist the wire to secure it. You can also make additional holes to secure the hand even better. Roll down and button the sleeves to finish off the arms and hands. If you need to, you can always put a little hot glue on the end of the sleeve to hold the hand securely. Since I decided to use a jacket, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the finished arm through the jacket. Next, I pretty much need to do the same thing for the legs. We have a lot of plastic drop cloth from old paint jobs. Now this isn't the one mil kind, it's much heavier so it bunches up nicely. You can also roll up towels or rugs or even blankets to make quick legs and arms as well. Now if you're using old plastic or material you don't care about, you can easily cut it to length. Otherwise, just use smaller material or use plain old newspapers. If the rug or blanket, or in this case the plastic drop cloth, are long enough, you only need one roll that you can use for both legs simply by bending it in the middle and then stuffing each side down a pant leg. I'm going to attach the feet in pretty much the same way as the hand.
The wire or string will hold the feet on, but you also want to use some duct tape but it'll help keep it straight and a little less floppy. Next up, it's time to tether the lower body to the upper body. A rope will work great for this. Use the belt loops on the pants and you can run the rope up under the shirt or the jacket. You're basically making some old country style suspenders. Stuff the shirt into the pants before tightening the ropes and keep adjusting all the parts until they look anatomically aligned and correct. Tie off the rope and then cut off the excess and hide the rest. Now if you have a wig, give it a try. And you can easily keep it in place by taping it. Well, he's getting there, folks. Now, let's take him down to his final resting place. I'm gonna lay him down on the driveway. But you can use a rope over his shoulders and back if you wanna fasten his body vertically to a tree or a porch. Now, here's an opportunity to get real creative and construct the crime scene. How did this guy end up here? I'm placing him below a tree with one leg up on the bush. One shoe is on, but I'm gonna wedge the other one up in the tree. That way it looks like this dummy fell out of the tree. Now's my chance to use some of that fake blood I brewed up earlier. I'm using the soapy kind, which will easily wash off the driveway tomorrow. Hey, check this out. I also threw on some old sunglasses that I found laying in the parking lot of that thrift store. Now, if you have a pin spot like Bill told you about earlier, you can illuminate the corpse for your display. Or you can use a flood or a spotlight. Now, you want to show off your work, and you certainly wouldn't want anybody to trip over a dead body. You can get all sorts of stuff at thrift stores, from clothes and shoes to props, and even cheap old TV sets that you can use with big screen TV. We'll talk about that a little later. Teresa looks like you're getting ready to do some dirty work. Yeah, and, and we're this is a pumpkin. special effects show. I mean, come on, co carving a pumpkin? That's kind of typical, don't you think? Well, actually, it would be if I was only going to carve a face right on the front of the pumpkin. Okay. But what we're going to do is carve a face on the front, and we're going to carve some designs on the back, and that's going to put some really cool effects on the house. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, well, I'm going to come back tonight and check it out, all right? All right. See all you right. Then. Hand me that remote. Let's speed things up a little bit. Carve your pumpkin just like you would any old pumpkin and then add a design to the back that will cast an image onto the wall. I carved out another set of eyes for this bad boy. Once the pumpkin is lit, so long as it's near a wall, it will cast an eerie light projection onto the wall. How's that for teaching an old pumpkin new tricks? Wow, I've never thought about carving both sides of a pumpkin. Now we're gonna show you how to make the world's fastest dummy. And the reason it's so fast is because we're just gonna have its arms sticking out of the ground. So basically you only need two garden stakes which you can quickly and easily hammer into the ground. Wherever you want those arms sticking out of your grave. And then you need a couple of gloves, something so you can stuff them and make them look like hands. You need something that you're gonna use for sleeves. You can either use sleeves off of a shirt or a jacket. We're just gonna use these pant legs because you know you only need the top part anyways. It's kind of cool to maybe put the stakes in at a slight angle so that the arms are coming out towards you. And you need some newspaper or something to stuff the sleeve. And I'm also going to use some 
foil just to stuff the front ends of the fingers so we'll be able to like curve them in interesting ways. All right. So why don't you go ahead and cut those sleeves about that long. And I'll start stuffing the fingers. You can also take apart an old pillow, anything that you can use to stuff these. foil you can actually sort of pose the fingers and then to finish it off you want to make sure you add a couple leaves and other scrap to the ground to make it look like the arms are actually coming out of it when finished complete your graveyard by adding prop headstones and as always lighting with color floodlights is a must you can hide the actual floodlight with another headstone all right, this guy's looking pretty good. Addition of some lights and stuff. Now, these are looking a little clean from some guy who's just crawled out of the ground. So we're gonna take our leftover black spray paint here. And then scumble the stuff around there. There you have it. That tip chill me to the bone. What a scary idea! Hey, Tim! That looks great! Hey, can I have some candy? Oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, just a little something we whipped up. First thing you need is something with sleeves. Now, what I have here is a medical coat because then we can do, you know, mad scientist, that kind of thing. It could be anything, could be a jacket, could be a sweater, but you need sleeves so that you have your hand, your real hand, the other real hand, and you have your fake arm that goes around the outside. An open front object is the easiest thing to use. All right. Next, of course, we have candy to put in the bowl. And we have a wire hanger so that you can support the hand and attach it around and like helps it so it's not flopping around. Very importantly, you need three fake hands. Two for the outside and one for the inside. What I've chosen for the outside are scary skeleton hands. One for my real hand and one to go around the bowl. And if you use something like this, then it's really easy to not be able to tell there's not a real hand in here. Now, I've, sh I've chosen the scary red hand to go on the inside because the fingers are a little shorter. It'll be easier not to get them caught on the edge of the bowl. Now, you're gonna need some rope or string or belt or anything because you're gonna want to be able to attach the bowl to you so you don't have to support it with your scary hand. And you're also gonna need some duct tape because you need duct tape for any kind of project. I've got some regular tape just in case I want to mark where I want to put any holes or anything like that because you'd be hard to see a marker. Now, gonna need some wire cutters for the wire and what I have here is a pair of regular pliers. But most regular pliers, if you use this area right here, will actually cut wire. And some other cutting implements, a pair of scissors and a nice little mat knife. And to stuff the arm, you can use anything like plastic, garbage bags or plastic they have lying around. Anything that's sort of bulky, you can use stuffing from pillows. You can use uh, any like brown bags, you can use newspaper, or just other old clothes that you want to like use to stuff in the arm. You can use a power drill, which if you don't have one, we've got some other things you can use, but it's really good for poking holes. And you can also poke holes with the end of a hot glue gun because you can melt through the plastic. I gotta warn you, if you're gonna do any kind of plastic melting of any kind, you need to do it outside because it's a little toxic. And what I have here is a bowl of ice water because if you're doing anything with a hot glue gun, if you accidentally drip some on you or burn yourself, immediately plunge your fingers in there and it won't hurt so bad. And you wanna make sure that any of these projects we're talking about, you wanna cover your table surface in case you get anything on it. First, you need to cut a hole in the bottom of the bowl or cauldron. This particular cauldron is made out of pretty heavy plastic, so I'm actually drilling a series of holes into the bottom of it. 
and then I'll use a mat knife to finish the job. Now we have a hole that the hand will go through. If you don't want to tackle something that's quite this sturdy, which you can use knives or saws or anything like that on, you can get something that's a little simpler, like your basic handy dandy, you know, thin plastic bowl. And that you can really easily poke a hole in the bottom of. Well, melt it a little bit there. Goes through real easy. And then you can probably even use your scissors on that. Just like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. Ta-da! Now, I prefer a, a deeper bowl, because then you can hide the hand a lot easier. So, we're going to go back to using the cauldron, but that's just to show you an alternative. So I'm going to put the glove that I picked out here like my actual hand would be. It's going to be right about there. I'm going to use masking tape to mark where I'm going to need a few holes. One to secure the fingers and another for the main part of the hand. I'm going to go ahead and use a glue gun to poke these two holes. You're also going to need a hole on the top edge to string the rope through. Feed the rope through and run it over your shoulder to get the right length. We'll need one more hole toward the bottom of the bowl to secure the rope with. Run the rope through the hole and adjust it to yourself. You can test tying it off, but only use a knot that you can easily untie. Make it easier for you. Next up, we need to use a wire hanger for the armature of the arm. I'm using that little part of the pliers to make the cut in the wire hanger. Then I'm going to straighten it out slightly and run it along the length of my arm. Leave enough at the top to make a hook. The other end will go into the monster hand or glove. Run it through a finger and actually pierce the glove so that you can secure the hand to the bowl. Before you secure it, you want to create the finished arm. You can stuff it with whatever you have. Here I'm using an old heavy plastic drop cloth. Again, garbage bags or paper bags, newspapers or old clothes will work. I'm going to use duct tape to hold the plastic together in the shape of the arm. No need to be stingy with the duct tape. When the arm is shaped, it's time to put it into a sleeve. Here I'm sticking it into the lab coat. Okay, so I'm poking the wire through the hole in the front of the cauldron and wrapping it back out through the other hole. The great thing about hanger wire is that it's pretty heavy so that once you bend it, it stays put. Next, we need to make a liner for the bottom of the bowl. Black cloth or plastic will be perfect. A garbage bag, or in this case, a section of black plastic drop cloth will do the trick. Cut a piece that roughly fits the bottom of the bowl. Make it slightly bigger so that it will have a little give, so you don't rip it out when you're moving the hand around. You'll need a hole for your hand in the middle, so bunch up the plastic and snip it off in the center. Be sure not to cut off too much. You can always go bigger, it's hard to go smaller. Next, we're gonna attach the inside glove to the hole of the liner. I'm gonna cut a few slits in the bottom edge of the glove to create tabs to tape to the plastic. To secure it, we'll use our trusty duct tape. I'm taping the tabs with the duct tape to the underside of the liner. If you have black duct tape, you might also want to reinforce it on the top edge as well. And put that in there, inside there, 
and you can leave it or you can just run your duct tape around the edge so it can't go anywhere. You also want to be sure to cover up any wire or anything so that when kids reach in there for candy that there's nothing sharp that they can get their hands caught on. And you want to make sure to not make it tight because you want to be able to like lift the hand up and down and do all sorts of stuff with it. Now the other thing that you're going to want to do is protect your wrist. You can either sand off those edges or you can take handy dandy duct tape and just make sure you go over anything sharp. And you can double it up if it's especially sharp. One of the things that's going to make this look good is we got to secure this up around your shoulder. And we can do that with how we secure it to your body. You take your rope and you're going to want to bring it through this loop of wire. That's why I suggest having the wire in there because it's going to help you throughout. And sort of about the distance of where you're going to wear it to where your shoulder is, that's about how far away you want to tie it off so it doesn't slide around. And you're going to tie it off over here. You can tie it in a slip knot or a bow, whatever works. Make sure you have it high enough so you're actually able to move your hand around in the bowl. Our bow works pretty nice. And then all you have to do is See, I have that right there about where my shoulder is. And then I'm going to slip the rest of the jacket on. And that holds everything pretty much together. And you can adjust where this is. And when you got your placement right, you're probably going to want to put a piece of black tape over this rope so, they can't, so the kids can't see that either. And you want to fit it, try and button this here. If you're going to use a sweater or a sweatshirt or something like that, you're going to need to cut holes in it for your rope. See, now that's looking pretty good for my angle. That'll get the kids. <laughs> hey, you there! You like TV, right? Well, watch this one, and you'll see how you can use your TV at home for spooktacular Halloween tricks! Carve me up, pull out my guts, then bake the seeds and eat them up. Oh, pumpkin patch, oh, pumpkin patch, how scary are your pumpkins? When out on a walk, there rose such a clatter. I sprang from the couch to see what's the matter. Away to the doorway, I bolted in a flash. I started to shudder and the bowl fell with a crash. The most spectacular tricks we saved for last. How would you like to make a ghostly head transparently float in the middle of the air? It'll freak the neighbors out. It's by far the coolest effect you can do. This trick requires a DVD player, a TV set, a sheet of clear rigid plastic or plexiglass, and a little imagination. You'll also need an image of a head surrounded in darkness. We've provided that as an extra on this very DVD. Happy All Hallows Eve! <laughs> if you'd like a little more variety, you can purchase Big Screen TV Volumes 1, 2, or 3, or the Halloween Scarols DVD. See all of these in the extras section under More Spooktacular Products. The object here is simply to reflect the image of the face from the TV into the plastic sheet. First, pick a place in the house to do this illusion. The best place is going to be a window somewhere. Here, we've chosen a window in the garage. Once you have the location, take the TV and lay it horizontally, flat on its back. Use something to secure the TV in place. 
Sticking it in an ice chest or in a bin or a box or on a suitcase or crate will work well. Make sure the bottom of the TV edge is farthest away from where people will view the trick and make sure whatever you use to prop up the TV is secure and sturdy. Smaller TVs are easier to work with. You may also consider getting a cheap old TV at a thrift store. Just make sure you can hook up a DVD player to the TV. Once the TV is in place, the plastic sheet must be placed diagonally over the TV. The bottom of the plastic must rest on or near the bottom edge of the TV set. The top of the plastic will be up diagonally across from the bottom. Here we've taped the bottom edge of the plastic to a table. The piece of plastic that you use must be a little wider than your TV set and probably about twice as high. You'll want to cover the length of the window. In this case our plastic is a little long so it wants to bow down in the middle. We're going to fix that by hanging the middle of it from the ceiling. We drill a hole in the edge of the plastic and secure a wire to it. This will help keep it from bowing. You may also purchase inexpensive aluminum channel and place the plexiglass edge inside it. Next, make sure the DVD player is attached to the TV set, plug it in, and play the head. Now comes the fun part. You'll want to create a little scene over which the head will be floating. You need this to show off the transparency of the effect. In this case, we're using our pumpkin head image from the Halloween Scarols DVD, so we're going to decorate a pumpkin patch in the background. We've set up a table and we're placing several fake pumpkins on old paint cans at various levels. We're also using some scenery behind the pumpkins. Basically what you're doing is just setting up a fun scene. We're then going to light it with an orange floodlight. And if you have a stereo with external speakers, you may want to place the speakers outside the window. You can certainly do any type of decoration that you want. Any type of scene will work. This is a little more cute, but you can go scary or more haunting. The image included on this DVD for you to use is a wise cracking skeleton head. Take a look. Now, give this guy a good home. Our last trick of the night is to create the illusion of a giant monster watching from the inside of the house. The trick is done by using a DVD player, that black garden mesh that we talked about earlier, and preferably two TV sets. The last but most important ingredient is the image of an eye. Our Terror Eyes DVD was designed specifically for this effect. You can see a preview of it in the extras section along with Big Scream TV. Just look for those spooktacular products. We covered the window with the garden weed blocker mesh to hide the TVs. If you have two small TVs, you place each one a few feet apart. In this case, we've propped them up over the kitchen sink in the kitchen window. We next take the video feed from the DVD player and use what's known as an RCA video splitter to split the signal and send the same eyeball image to each TV. You can get this video splitter at an electronics store. Make sure that you have a male end on the RCA splitter that splits into two female ends. If you have the luxury of using two TV sets, no one's going to figure out how you did this effect. You can even split the TVs between two different windows. It's a great, amazing effect. And the Terrorize DVD has three different types of eyeballs that you can use. If you only have one TV, you can still do the effect because the DVD of Terrorize has a single pair of eyes as an option. Of course, it's going to look like a smaller creature is lurking around the corner or under the porch, but it's still fun and people won't figure out what you've done. You can also do this trick indoors for parties. Hey, that's cool stuff! How do I get my head on the screen? Mr. Scaremill, I'm ready for my close-up! <laughs> Scary on your bunkers. <laughs> and what do 
to my wondering I should appear But a pack of three tricksters Eight monsters so near What a gory little group So green and quite quick Every other moment I just might get sick More rapid than goblins The trees they came When monster howled and shrieked And called each by name Now slasher, now ranted Now creeping and axe man On goblin, on putrid, on stomper and blitz up To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall Now slash away, gash away, smash away all uh.